Hey, welcome back to the Spectre Creative Channel. I'm your host, Scott Toy Guru Nightlick. I've been a fan of a lot of pop culture things, comics, movies, toys, all that kind of stuff, video games. And what am I describing today? Well, I'm describing a very passionate group of people, people who keep supplies in their home just to dress up and support their favorite activity, people who are very, very vocal about what is good and what is bad, people who go to events to be by those who love the same thing, and I'm obviously talking about sports fans. An interesting group, right? And an interesting group which people who collect toys and action figures and watch comics and movies and shall we call general geek culture can sometimes relate to, sometimes not. But sports fans dress up just as wild and crazy as we do, and they cheer on their favorite teams and feel a sense of ownership of them, and they're constantly talking about balls. I'm not sure what the obsession is, but they are, and they scream a lot, and they even wear makeup and crazy outfits, including things like wigs and capes, and let's not forget the body paint. Lots and lots of body paint. So the big question is, well, okay, not when they have the stormtroopers, forget that, but back to the normal body paint. Why is it that sports fans are allowed to do this and it's considered normal, but when geeks do the same exact thing, it's looked at as deviant behavior? When we want to dress up and show our team's colors and walk around, we're looked at as, okay, that guy, girl, person is weird. You're mocking me, aren't you? Oh, no, 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 no. Buzz, look, an alien! So, where does this mocking come from? Why this social isolation for people who celebrate geek culture when they're very similar to sports fans? I mean, we have trophy shelves. We just don't, they don't look like this. They really look like this. It's our version of a trophy shelf. It says, I accomplished something. I got everything. I own every figure from a set or, you know, all the characters that I want to have, as opposed to I won a specific event because I could throw a ball better than someone. And we have the events that we attend as communities. Sometimes they're movie premieres, and we will sleep out for weeks, if not months in advance, just so we can get a good seat. Or at least we did that when we were in college, before we had a family and responsibilities. I only did three days, okay? Three days in the episode one line. But the point is, we have communal events, too. Yet, when we dress up as the, the uh, properties we love... It's thought of as odd. We don't souvenir by buying jerseys. We souvenir by, well, buying action figures to say, I was there. I participated in this event. A lot of people bought, well, in fact, most people bought episode one action figures as a souvenir of going to the movie versus actually because they were playing out the adventures of, uh, you know, little Annie and all of his wizard friends. So, this behavior is looked at as normal and socially acceptable. Yet, you take the exact same behavior and you put it with a sci-fi fantasy spin, and it's looked at as odd. Why is it that throwing a ball, the ability to have athletic talent, is considered by our society a greater talent than, say, the ability to draw a comic book? or to know Star Wars trivia. Popular kids are always depicted as the cheerleaders and the, you know, the, 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 the football quarterback. They're the ones that are, you know, shown in movies and TV shows as popular. And I'm not saying sports are bad at all. I am not knocking it. There are huge benefits to sports for both kids and adults, both from a health standpoint, a morale building standpoint, a mental health standpoint. Sports are a great thing, and I actually enjoy many, many sports. Uh, you know, I did track in, in high school, and I constantly, I actually, you know, I work out. But when you look at a activity that is sort of thought of as a geek culture activity, it is very much stigmatized by society and looked at as, well, sometimes even evil. Yet, at the same time, these same activities, and I'm talking about Dungeons & Dragons, if you're just listening to the audio and not looking at the visuals, I know a lot of subscribers do that on this channel, 
Dungeons and Dragons has been proven over and over again by child play therapists as incredibly helpful for child development. Yet, in the 80s, it was thought of, and still today, it has a stigma. So let me tell you kind of a personal story on my collecting with this. When I grew up uh, in the 80s, one of the last toy lines th that sort of like bordered between uh, playing and collecting was Ninja Turtles for me, the original one. And I remember very, very distinctly, I was in Target with my father, and I had this tattoo action figure, or this character named Tattoo, that was going to be my next Ninja Turtle purchase. And I remember very vividly, my father said to me that I could either continue to buy toys, and I could buy this tattoo action figure, or I could have the blonde. I had to choose, the action figure or the blonde. I'm not sure why he chose a blonde, but he did. And so it was distinctly that choice, and I put tattoo down. Yet, the idea of choosing between the blonde and the action figure, and there are times when you can actually have both, although she's a brunette there. Well, the other conversation I recall was when I was still collecting toys all through college, my mother said to me that toy collecting does not come with a 401k, and I needed to focus on something else because I was still writing essays as a film major on toys as a marketing vehicle. Well, lo and behold, I went off to work for Mattel, which is a Fortune 500 company, and I married an amazing, brilliant blonde woman. So this isn't a video, you know, uh, putting down my parents. They were just obviously looking out for my best interest. But I think it's a perfect example of the difference between celebrating, you know, someone who knows an immense amount about, you know, nerd and geek culture versus someone who can throw a ball really well. And this is a frustration that a lot of people in geek culture have that they just don't feel like, why is it society not accepting me? I'm just as good at other things just because I'm not good at one thing, but I'm still very good at other things. And why is one considered better than the other? I think part of it, the difference between geek culture and called sports culture, is that one is public and one is private. Geek culture tends to be something you do by yourself, reading a comic book versus sports are done usually out in the open and everyone sees it. I mean, even Comic-Con panels, which you know, is a group event, a communal event, is in a closed, dark room, as opposed to sports that are well-lit and everyone can see what's happening. So, at the end of the day, though, things have changed in culture a lot, especially since the 80s. And the idea of, you know, who's laughing now, it really is because there has been a fundamental shift in the way society views what has been called geek or nerd culture. And in the last 20 years, things like sitcoms, as well as movies that have focused more and more on drawing inspiration from, you know, comic books and geek culture has really shown that nerds really do rule the world and we are smart and sophisticated and just because we play with action figures, I'm sorry, collect action figures, it doesn't mean that we're social deviants. So, honestly, in a way, raise a glass and appreciate the generation that came before because they had it a lot harder than we do and it's great to be in a time when pop culture and nerd culture is becoming more and more the norm. And hey, if you like sports, that is awesome. I am not knocking it. But it's time that geek culture is really recognized by mainstream society as incredibly valid. I hope this video was insightful. Do you have a story similar growing up where you were discouraged from uh, raising your freak flag high? Let me know and uh, let's talk about it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.